Today we're going to be talking about the digestive system. As you can see, everyone eats. You have to get energy in some form. So what do animals need to live? Well, we already know we've talked about autotrophs and heterotrophs. Autotrophs make their own food um, from sunlight and, uh, and carbon dioxide. And heterotrophs acquire energy from outside sources, from food and from oxygen. So food and oxygen together make ATP, which is the basis of our energy. We'll talk about energy more later. Um, digestion, it's the breaking down of large molecules into simpler compounds. And then those simpler compounds, those smaller molecules, are absorbed by the body to carry out cell function. So they take in food and make energy. And digestion is what happens to that food. Digestive systems, everybody's got one. You can see on all of these, they have very complicated systems. Mouth, pharynx, esophagus, crop, gizzard, intestine, uh, tiflosol. They have all of these different parts, and that takes the whole thing is what it takes to digest food for this little earthworm. It's also the bird and grasshopper. But you'll see some very similar characteristics to our digestive system. So there are two types of digestion. One is intracellular digestion. Intra is within, and uh, so within food vacuoles, lysosomes fuse with the vacuole and break down the food. So it's within a cell. Um, then there's extracellular digestion, where there's a large cavity, like our stomach, um, and it's digested in that large cavity. So our digestive system, um, we're going to go through all of these today. There's the mouth, then the esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and accessory organs, liver, pancreas, gallbladder, and salivary glands. Those are accessory organs because the food doesn't actually go through those organs, but those organs participate in digestion. So here's our human digestive system. We're going to go through this whole thing. You've got your tongue, um, these other glands in your salivary glands. Here's your oral cavity. Here's your pharynx. That's where it first goes down. The esophagus is the whole tube. Then um, we'll go down to the stomach, and in the stomach we've got this cardiac orifice and the pyloric sphincter. It's a special one, we'll talk about what it means. Then we go down into our um, small intestines. We go all through all the small intestine. There's, it's super long, we'll talk about that. Then into the large intestine, which is up, over, and down, and then out um, into the rectum and anus. Okay, how do you get and use food? So here are some key terms. Ingest is taking in food, and digest um, are things like mechanical digestion, which is physically breaking up food, and chemical digestion, which is through chemical reactions, food is broken down so that it can be absorbed into cells. And a big part of that are enzymes. There's also absorbing. It gets absorbed across cell membranes um, through diffusion or active transport. Um, don't worry about those too much. And then eliminated at the end, undigested extracellular material passes out of the digestive system. So you ingest, and then you digest, then you absorb it, and then you eliminate. Those are the four steps in our digestive system. So let's start with ingestion. The mouth, it also called the oral cavity. Um, your teeth as you're chewing and your tongue as it's moving, that's called mastication, which is mechanical digestion. So your teeth chew, soften, break up food, and your tongue does something really interesting. It turns food into a little um, ball, and then it's called a bolus, and then that bolus is what goes down your throat. So that's why you don't really swallow food whole. We break it down into small little ball pieces and then we swallow them. There's also chemical digestion begins in the mouth with saliva. And it's secreted by those salivary glands. The big one is amylase. That's an enzyme that digests starch into maltose. Um, it basically breaks down carbohydrates into simpler sugars. So the first thing that gets broken down in the mouth is carbohydrates. And that's just with your saliva. Then there's also an a uh, aspect of saliva called mucin, which lubricates your food so that it's easier to swallow. There are also things like buffers, which neutralize acid, um, and antibacterial chemicals that help to disinfect your food as you eat it. 
All right, so food moves from the mouth to the pharynx, through the glottis, and into the esophagus. So you've got your mouth, and then the pharynx is this first part right at the back of your throat, and then the glottis is there's a flap of skin that either goes up or down to show you to either whether you're breathing or swallowing, it'll decide which pipe needs to open or close. So it closes the windpipe when you swallow um, so that food will travel down the esophagus so you don't actually inhale your food. Um, the esophagus, the long, long tube, uh, it moves food along by peristalsis. And that's, you kind of see this wave contraction here, contract and it pushes. It keeps contracting and pushing and it's kind of a wave-like motion. We'll show you more detail in class. And that is called peristalsis. You need to make sure you know that word. All right, so as we said, peristalsis is that those rhythmic waves of muscle contraction. And that's what pushes it along. Also, there are sphincters. Those are muscular ring-like valves that regulate the passage of material. So it keeps food from coming back up. So once the food has gone through, the sphincter closes so the food's not going to come up anymore. It just makes it go down and locks it off, like a rubber band, kind of. Okay, so now that we've gone from the mouth through the esophagus, um, through that peristalsis, now we're in the stomach. And in the stomach, uh, the environment has two aspects to it. One is a churning action. It kind of keeps churning and churning and churning, breaks food into smaller pieces. And then the other is it is highly acidic. So glands along the edge secrete gastric juice. So there are glands all along the edge of the stomach that um, give off the gastric juice, which is hydrochloric acid and the digestive enzymes, which we'll talk more about. Um, so it gives off that gastric juice, which starts to break down the food. So it has those two things, super, super acidic, and it is a churning action. Um, so its functions food storage. It can stretch to fit two liters of food. Um, it also disinfects food. It's so acidic that it kills bacteria. It also breaks apart cells. Um, see, eight, hydrochloric acid has a pH of two, super acidic. Then there's also the chemical digestion of proteins. So the biggest enzyme in the stomach is pepsin. Um, it is secreted as pepsinogen, which the HCL uh, once they're together, it activates it, and so turns into pepsin, and then it breaks down proteins into smaller peptides. Um, so here's our question. But the stomach is made out of protein. What stops the stomach from digesting itself? That is, there's a mucus that's also secreted by stomach cells that protects the lining of the stomach. So if your stomach ever stops secreting that mucus, uh, you'd be in danger of... Um, of uh, that acid eating away at your stomach lining. All right, so food was turned into a bolus by the tongue, a small ball of food, and now in the stomach, once it's into this solution of gastric juices and small particles of food, we call it chyme. So bolus to chyme. Then we pass through the pyloric sphincter to the duodenum. So a sphincter, again, is that ring-like valve. Once the food goes through, it closes, so it won't, go any, it won't come back up. Um, so, and the pyloric sphincter is a really small, skinny, tight thing. Food goes through, closes right off. Nothing's coming back up. So here you go. The mouth breaks up food, moistens food, digests starch. We start with those carbohydrates and kills germs. Then the stomach kills germs, stores food, breaks up food into that solution. Um, called chyme, and starts to digest proteins with that pepsin. Then here's your cardiac sphincter and pyloric sphincter. That's what has just gone through, and now we're in the small intestine. So now we're in the small intestine. It serves two functions. One is chemical digestion. Um, it's the major organ of digestion and absorption. And the reason is, it is over 6 meters long, which is 23 feet. Okay, so you take uh, three six-foot tall people and you still haven't reached the length of the small intestine. It is so long. Um, so through that lining, it absorbs um, all the initial nutrients and stuff throughout the small intestine. 
um, and that's through all 23 feet of it. And then there's the chemical digestion going on the whole time. Its structure is that its walls are in folds, little folds and ridges, and they have villi, which are little waving structure along the walls. Remember cilia from some other creatures? Villi are like little finger-like, hair-like things on the inside of the small intestines. And um, there's also something called the brush border. Within the villi, um, there are microvilli, even smaller little ones. And they increase surface area to improve absorption efficiency. So if you had just a flat area, it would absorb some. But if you have an area with a whole bunch of bumps and little hairs and stuff, that increases the surface area so it's able to absorb a lot more. The small intestine is broken up into three sections. The duodenum, which does most of the digestion, um, the actual breaking down and such. And then the jejunum and the ileum, which is where um, most of the nutrients and water are absorbed within the small intestine. So the duodenum is partially the most important because it has all these accessory organs attached to it. Um, it's the first section, so you get that chime from the stomach, that acidic food solution, and it mixes with digestive juices from the accessory organs, and we're going to talk through each of them. But you can see first here, here's our pancreas, um, here's our stomach with the acidic chime comes into the small intestines, then the bile um, is made in the liver, stored in the gallbladder, comes into the small intestines, and these all work together to digest the food in the duodenum. So the pancreas. The pancreas um, has digestive enzymes called peptidases. That's one of them. And there's two types of peptidases, which um, they specifically break down proteins. Trypsin and chymotrypsin break down proteins. Now, if you think about proteins, you know there's the different letters um, as the amino acids as they break down the proteins. Um, well, trypsin and chymotrypsin only cut in certain spots in the protein, so they don't cut everything. They don't break it completely down. So there's something called exopeptidases that finish the job through hydrolysis, which is just a reaction with water. So peptidases are one of the digestive enzymes from the pancreas. The pancreas also provides amylase, which is also what you find in your saliva, um, but it's pancreatic amylase, so it's slightly different. Uh, but it does the same type of thing, breaks down carbohydrates into simple sugars. Um, another way to phrase that is it starches into disaccharides, simple sugars. Another digestive enzyme from the pancreas is lipase, and is a major fat digesting enzyme. So it turns lipids into fatty acids and glycerol. Um, it also turns nucleic acids into nucleotides. That's another one. So lipase breaks down the fat, and then in from the pancreatic digestive enzymes, nucleic acids get turned into nucleotides. They get broken down. Another thing from the pancreas are buffers, which also um, are used to reduce acidity. Okay, so after the pancreas, we've got the liver. So here's your pancreas, and another aspect we have is the liver, bringing in bile. So, um, also, as the small intestine is absorbing nutrients, uh, the liver gets the first crack at those nutrients. The absorbed nutrients go into veins, which go through something called the hepatic portal vessel, and that leads to the liver. So it gets those first nutrients. But as far as its interaction with the small intestine, um, it produces bile. And bile is an emulsifier. It mechanically breaks up fats. Okay. So it doesn't, um, it's not a chemical reaction, it's a mechanical reaction um, that it it's, um, breaks it up into smaller little bits. And it works hand in hand with pancreatic lipase, which, break, which also breaks down fats. Um, it's stored in the gallbladder until needed, so that's all the gallbladder does is store bile. Another connection here, so bile contains colors from old red blood cells that collect in the liver. And then that iron from the red blood cells rusts and that is what makes feces brown. So there's a connection to the circulatory system from the digestive system. So this is part one, we will do part two momentarily.